Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The market's crashing in FC24, but why? That is the question we're going to answer today. We've talked about Team of the Year and when it's coming and that news breaking onto the scene, but isn't it too early for the market to be dropping this much with Team of the Year still about two and a half weeks away? So we're going to talk about that today and as you just saw on the loading screen, those crazy cards for the Versus Fire and Ice promo that is coming tomorrow. We're going to get you ready about this promo so that you know what to expect, what this promo brought the last time that it was released and take a look at the latest leaks and information about it. So all that and more in today's video if you're excited for it drop a thumbs up subscribe if you're new let's go to the SBCs. not a lot to cover once again actually let's just go straight to my team because yesterday's winter wildcard SBC has gone boom straight into my team and uh it's a little controversial but not that controversial because hey it's actually a decent price right i was happy with this SBC right away yesterday when i saw it drop because the price is not bad 180,000 coins but it's not loved by everybody. And I think that's just because the position changed, the stats, maybe not as big of an upgrade as people wanted. It is John Stones with the block plus defending playstyle. Guys, to me, this isn't a center defensive mid. To me, this is a center back. And that is exactly what I do with him in game. I swap him with Rude Hullet. That was my intentions after doing the SBC. And I'll be honest, I don't understand the huge dislike ratio on the SBC. 27% upvoted is really, really low. When you look at the card itself, it's barely upvoted over downvoted on the actual card. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm looking at this as a center back, not a center mid or a center defensive mid. And the reason why I'm a lot more gung-ho about this than the other SBCs we've had is because he's cheap. 190,000 coins compared to other SBCs like Allison, another Prem midfielder who was 580,000 coins, 400,000 coins more than this. He was really easy to get done. So that's what I like the most about it. Is it an amazing card? I got to say, it's not that amazing, but I don't have any Evo versions. He goes into my team. I needed a center back to upgrade, and I played five games with him yesterday. Division Rivals gameplay was absolutely horrid. So I'm not going to judge him fully on that yet, but he did not feel that great in game, first of all, uh, those first couple of games that we played. His traits look decent. The price is decent. The links are great, of course. Fits my team with the city links, really more the English links are what I need. So, yes, I did the SBC, and you know what? I got to say, that's one of the better value Winter Wildcards SBCs that we've had, but it's almost sad to say that because the Winter Wildcard player SBCs have just not been good. So let me know down in the comments what you think about that SBC. I think it's decent. Um, and I'm glad that they made a bigger name player SBC like that pretty cheap. But you can kind of tell that it's one of those just middle. It's just an eh. It's like a 6 or a 7 out of 10 SBC. But I like the price because it's easy to get him done. Now, we also had Team of the Week 16 that was dropped yesterday with a couple of gems inside of here. And I want to point out one card right now. Mavro Panos. You maybe have seen this. Maybe not. We're going to have to go to foot.gg for this one because he actually fits in evolution he fits the keep up evolution which boosts him with the jockey plus play style to 87 rated with 87 pace incredible physical stats with 93 physical the problem with this card is he can't dribble really bad composure as well 72 composure and 83 reactions is a little bit low for my liking his passing is a little bit low 52 vision but if you want a pure defender who's probably going to be big with 99 strength i believe he's six foot four as well big tall vvd-esque in terms of like the build this is going to be that type of center back for you. So 30,000 coins for the inform and then 75,000 coins for the keep up um, evolution. It is a little bit pricey, but that is kind of a cool evolution straight out of the team of the week from yesterday. Also, a couple of nice cards in here. Dragason, hope he comes to Spurs. That could be a really nice card if it was a Spurs card for sure, right? Phil Foden, inform, no play style. Plus, Ibanez from the Saudi League with 89 pace. Cold Palmer, love the dynamic image. And then, of course, you've got Mane and yet again, another inform Salah. Rest of the team of the week, solid, nothing super crazy, but there are a couple hidden gems in there uh, with, uh, you know, Cold Palmer. That's one that if informs ever go down to like 20K again, stock that in the club because right wing and cam, that could fit a couple of evolutions. But that was a pretty quiet day. Mostly that was it for content yesterday. Another objective for the theme team pursuit to get some more uh, packs and stuff like that done. So not too shabby there but really what the big news was was the market crashing guys prices down like crazy on a lot of the market yesterday now i was not losing coins on a lot of this stuff because it was the top tier market right that's what i want to talk about we'll talk about fire and ice in a second but um 
why did the market crash? That's the biggest question, right? Why are all these prices, and I want to show you some graphs on Footbin of players that just down crazy, crazy amounts. Why did all of these cards crash yesterday like they did, right? Why did we see Teo Hernandez go from 1 mil 80 down here to 789, which is where I bought him? I sold him right here at content so I could go get some more stuff. He went back up to 900k where he is now, but why did a lot of these prices get absolutely destroyed yesterday. Ferlin Mendy Ultimate Dynasties from 1.6 mil, 1.7, all the way to 1.3. We could look at icons like Yashin went from over a million coins down to 800K yesterday, right? 1.1 down to 800K. Why did this happen, right? That is the question we're going to answer. The answer is, well, it's because of Team of the Year. Honestly, those leaks that we talked about yesterday of Team of the Year, when it's coming, and really, I think the fact that it's two team of the year squads i think that makes a difference guys because that is just even more that's double the team of the year players right that people would want to try out and with the expectation of team of the year cards being very high rated and cracked a lot of people that were panic selling these cards yesterday are number one players that have a lot of coins and have bought these cards tradable um, and that want to a either get their coins because they want to be liquid for when team of the year drops and then they can go out and buy the new team of the year cards with those coins or b they're just selling because of course with team of the year just like other really massive promos there's usually really good content so there's a market crash beforehand so two reasons that people were selling yesterday to avoid the team of the year market crash that will be coming later on which will drop prices further 100 percent and then also for people to get coins liquid so they can get ready for what is going to be coming and have those coins ready for team of the year player items when they do drop but you can tell like a lot of the again it's cards that are like 500,000 coins and above it's those expensive ones dino 6.4 he was just 7 million coins maldini's down a ton zico is down a ton we watched ramirez drop yesterday a bunch of cards on my transfer list now these cards are really rare too right i said literally yesterday on stream for puteas i didn't have the coins at the time because i was in the middle of um the flip with uh, the Teo Hernandez, I think. So I only had like a million coins. And I literally was shouting this card on stream that 1.4 million was an insane buy because she's super rare, one of the most meta midfielders in this game. And even with the panic selling, there will be bounce backs. That's how it works with these panic sales, especially on the really rare cards right now in this game when there's still a decent amount of demand. And look at Putea. She's all the way back up at 1.7 million, 1.67 million coins. We watched Schneider go down. He hasn't bounced back yet. He's really low. Ramirez had a bounce back. Cafu was 1.2 mil. He's back up at 1.3 mil now. Uh, Valverde they went back up like we mentioned with tail there were so many fluctuations yesterday on those really expensive cards that if you timed it right you were able to make some good coins um, but is the market going to continue crashing that's the other question that we try to have to answer and kind of have to look at guys i do think that yes prices will go lower if you think about the next two weeks in this game like Zico is going to be probably four or five hundred thousand coins less than this as we roll into team of the year. So in the next couple of weeks, yes, it's going to go lower. We look long term, especially the expensive cards like the Ronaldinho, um, Thunderstruck that we were just kind of looking at R9, Mia Hamm, all of the really expensive cards that have been dropping are probably going to continue to drop in the next two weeks. But along the way, there might be some fluctuations still, right? Some of these cards, like we mentioned with Puteas, still one of the most meta versions of any midfielder in the game. Um, and her price is going to continue to fluctuate. Now, there's probably going to be some more drop-offs today. Maybe not as drastic as yesterday, but people that have got these that have seen the price go back up or have waited to sell for a price to rebound, they're maybe going to keep selling. We're getting the Versus promo. There's hype building for that with some big names in that as well. So it's really the top-tier cards that you have to be worried about the most. Anything that's 500 k and above right now, still, there could be a few drops because of the Team of the Year news, because of the promo that's coming out Friday. So I'm staying away from those cards unless it's a really rare card for a quick flip and there are opportunities to trade like we've already looked at and i've shown you with the graphs but i do think there are some more drops ahead but even if you think about this weekend puteas maybe doesn't go down to 1.3 or 1.4 mil again until like monday when team of the year voting is announced so that's kind of the risk that you play but if you were selling to get rid of one of these cards yesterday i hope you waited maybe until a bounce i know some of you guys are losing coins but also it's one of those things where if like if you don't have a lot of coins and you can't afford a card like that then you're chilling because the rest of the market's doing pretty good.
a lot of the market is continuing to do pretty good. I still have my investments. That's why I'm still low on coins. Uh, lazy selling a few things. Um, I still have the Dokus, right? Definitely helped out a bit with the uh, stones being decent value. I'm, I'm hoping that he goes up today with rivals rewards and stuff like that. Still have the John Barnes, lazy listing those. Even still have a couple of the inform cards or the the informs. I'm losing an inform Mane. Tried to make a quick flip. It worked. I didn't sell in time. And boom, now we're getting, it's chalked there. But still have the Mookie LAs, still have some 84 rated that I get lazy sales on a couple times a day. So I'm, the market's still very, very good and alive. It's just, once again, in those low tier areas. I'm just surprised that the panic selling and all this stuff happened so early. But I guess with the first news of team of the year and with it being so insane that we're getting two different team of the year teams, I guess that does create a lot of panic for those that own those big top tier cards. And, and now you have a big time uh, price drop because of that. Now, did any of the price drops yesterday have to do with this loading screen? I know some of you guys may be asking this question as well in your own mind. Like, did the FC versus promo screen on the cover of the game like affect things at all? And in my opinion, no. Because if you take a look at a lot of these price drops, and as we were watching them on stream, Puteus was dropping well before this was even dropped. Right? Yeah, we had some leaks of players and stuff, but really to me it was the team of the year that affected this. But if we take a look at this promo screen and let's talk about FC versus and what this promo actually is as well. Uh, these card designs, I mean, dog, those are insane. I think my favorite's the fire one. I just think that looks incredible. I can't wait to see an actual player dynamic on that. I know we have some leaks and they look really cool, but I'm excited to see a dynamic image. I mean, even the ice ones look pretty good too. They're cold, right? Nice car design. So with this being leaked and a lot of player leaks that I want to look over today, everybody who we have leaked as of right now, what is this promo like? Because a lot of us, maybe if you've only been playing FIFA for a year or two, you maybe don't know because it's been FIFA 22 was the only other time we've had this promo. It's technically called versus, right? If you look at the loading screen, it's FC versus. It's all about the fire versus the ice. It's that versus part of it. But what's going to be the differentiation between the two cards? That's going to be the big question with all these cards. Now, what is foot versus, right? The last time that it dropped was in December. Of FIFA 22 and it was basically this two different teams of all the same players you have one team where you have a fire version of one card and then you have another team with the exact same players with an ice version very similar stats small boosts and differences in between and some of them had skill move upgrades for the red versions I think it was and then weak foot upgrades no it was the other way around skill move upgrades for the ice versions and weak foot upgrades for the fire versions, I believe. I had the Pulisic SBC. I did the one that wasn't popular that had the five-star skill moves. Everybody had the fire one with the five-star weak foot, and I had the ice one with the uh, five-star skills. But this was the promo team back then. And guys, this promo is remembered as a very L promo. People remember this and are like, oh, foot versus, that promo was absolutely terrible. And the reason why, if you weren't around during that time, the reason why everybody looks at this promo and says, ah, oh, it's going to be crap, is because when this promo was leaked, yeah, we had Foot Sheriff back then, we had leaks, all that good stuff. He leaked that the promo was going to be all players on the fire team would be five-star weak foot, and all players on the ice team would be five-star skills. And that wasn't the case for everything. It was the case for a few cards. And some cards got insane upgrades with five-star weak foot, five-star skills. But it wasn't everything. And when our expectations are up here and it delivers down here, then there's a lot of frustration. Uh, and the promo team itself, it's not bad, right? You look at the players in here, Rashford, Gabriel Jesus, Valverde. This was the beginning, first time we ever had Claude Maurice kind of like come out as an insane promo card. The Schultz card, this Gomez, there was a decent promo team in here. But also the fact that the same promo team was released one week and then the same players the next week, I think put people off a little bit. So I wonder if EA learned from that and learned from how this was not very hype for a lot of people. And I'm so curious to see if they change it up at all this year for this year's team of versus. Um, but it's kind of what it feels like right now in the cycle of the game. A little bit of a filler promo because we're looking forward to team of the year, right? And this promo is going to be coming between winter wild cards and team of the year. I can't imagine that it's going to be that crazy. But hey, who knows? Let's take a look at the leaks. Of course, we've got Neymar. We knew this was coming. Um, another reason why Neymar's gold card is going up a lot right now, which if I had Neymar's gold card, I would consider not investing, maybe more so on the side of selling, especially before team of the year. He's gonna, his gold card is going to drop a good amount of team of the year, I imagine. Uh, but it's going to be out of packs because this one will be in packs. 
come this Friday. Now, other leaks, you may have seen these already, so we'll go through them quickly. Kamavinga, who basically, I think like 50 or 60% of people in this game already have evolved because he's got many different versions of evolutions that fit his card real well. Kingsley Coman, pretty interesting one. As you're going to notice, a lot of French players in this promo, especially some big names. Kingsley Coman, always good for a nice uh, special card. Man, I love this design. It just looks sick, man. So I'm excited for that one. Excited for a Hyunmin Sun versus card. Again, a lot of these um, these card designs are predicted stats, and they're also predicted between an ice versus a fire card. Is it going to be the same players in the versus ice and fire, or is it going to be different players unlike FIFA 22? Morata is getting a card as well. Some people just evoed his Euro version, I think, in one of the most recent evos. Bobby Firmino. There's a little bit of MLS, or not MLS, sorry. There's a little bit of Saudi League hype that is building uh, with like Team of the Week, Ibanez, the ASM we've had recently. A little bit of hype building here for the Saudi League. This could be a really nice card, especially in the Saudi League. He is Brazilian, right? But he'd probably be a little bit cheaper because the links wouldn't be as good. We've seen that this year with Saudi League players. So that's a good one I'm excited for. And then Upa Meccano, another French player here. Every time there's an Upa Meccano center back, it is hyped. And the Bayern links as well. Super excited for that card there. Now, a couple other leaks that we do have. Sergio Ramos. If you guys notice, Ramos's card was on the top page of Footbin yesterday at popular list because everybody's really excited for Ramos. He's getting a promo card. Hopefully, they do give him a decent amount of pace upgrade. It's got to be close to 80 or about 80. He might be really, really expensive in this promo team or he might be a bit disappointing and less expensive. But I can't imagine that a Sergio Ramos is under like three... Two or three hundred thousand coins, unless this card is bad, just because it's it's Ramos, right? So that's a leak that we have. We also have Danny Olmo, and then we have a Kieran Trippier, which is interesting. If they give him a nice pace boost, I mean, a lot of us, myself included, did the Kyle Walker Evo, but could this dethrone Kyle Walker if he gets enough of a pace boost with his other really good passing stats and maybe a good passing play style as well? So yeah, the biggest question that I have is: Is EA running this promo the exact same way? as they did in FIFA 22, and if they do, will it end up being an L, unfortunately? So, watch out for another loading screen today, of course, on Thursday. Sometimes they update it. Watch out for more leaks, because if I didn't count up the number of leaked players that we have there, but to me, that's not a full team. Unless they do it like they did in FIFA 22, then it would only be 11 players, and in that case, um, it'd be the same 11 players two weeks in a row, which, in my opinion, would be very disappointing, but we'll just have to see what they end up doing. So watch for a loading screen today that might give us some more clues on what versus fire and ice could actually look like. Now, let's talk today. Today's Rivals Rewards. First thing I want to talk about a little bit more in terms of the market. The last couple of weeks on Thursdays, especially last week, the market's taken off after Division Rivals Rewards. Remember the Winter Wild Cards last week were a perfect example of this. Uh, Enzo Fernandez, Balde, these cards, if you look at the 14-day graph, you can see Monday, Tuesday, they were low. They started to go up on Wednesday, but it was Thursday, right? 69,000 coins on Wednesday night before Rivals rivals hits, and by the time we're on Friday, Enzo has gone up 10,000 coins, right? From the low uh, mid-60s up to the mid-70K range, and then they just kept going. Yeah, you know, I'm hoping for a rise like that on Team 2 and Team 3 when I'm talking about the Dokus and actually Mukiele, who is at a price right now, probably a foot bit undercut that I think is going to be his lowest. If Mukiele is under 110, like this is a card, especially if we don't get a um, French right back that's in this upcoming promo, this is a card that I think is going to end up doing pretty well. And rising, yeah, he's uh, that's a foot bit undercut. I'm sure there's a lot of people sniping. He does have a lot of supply, so you have to be careful with that. But with this team... Winter wild cards, I'm, I'm invested still, and I'm holding on to these cards. Kyle Walker's starting to go up, 400,000 coins, right? He's starting to go up in price a decent amount. He's more rare, though, because he's a, he was part of the, like, was he a mini-release? Maybe not. Um, but I like this Team 2 and Team 3 because, guys, I still believe, I think this, this Fire Ice promo, it's not going to be viewed in the best of lights. So that's why I'm still a little bit gung-ho on these promo cards. I'm not going to invest fully on Winter wild cards, but, again, I'm going to watch the lower tier, and I think there could be movements there but if you're looking for trades today i think you want to look into again more of the out of packs players that have been doing well so far regardless you look at other cards in the market that continue to go up uh, like ansu fati right now this is a card that right before rivals rewards i mean i'm pretty interested in for 250,000 coins this guy was 270 a couple times yesterday i'm going to try to get this one on a bid here for like 230 if possible but 240 is pretty good he goes up a good amount. And then again, it's it's the low tier, man. Again, if I take a look at a lot of these card prices, Paul Scholes is 87K. 
right? Um, Joe Gomez, who we've talked about a lot in the last couple of weeks, is still 95,000 coins. Yeah, it's it's down a little bit from where he was, but we've had some insane EVOs, right? Um, the market on the low tier is still doing great. That's where I would be trading at the moment. And if you find low prices in and around here, um, around rivals, I think it could be a cent, right? Again, you have a card like Sh um, Schneider, who's down three, 400,000 coins. Then you have a card like Milito, who's rising 73K. That's up like 10,000 coins since yesterday. Dudek is 86. He was 92 yesterday. Um, yeah, so I like the low tier part of the market. Actually, that Julie card, once again, Julie's a card that I flip like once a day. If he's down at 130,000 coins, I buy because every single day I sell him above 140. And that's a card that I just love flipping on this game. Looks like there's some undercuts. He's still 140. So that was like a 10,000 coin undercut. So maybe we'll try to get a cheeky snipe here or something. But that's the sort of thing that you would be looking for on this market. And I think the market can go up a little bit more today because of Rivals Rewards. Last thing I'd point out about Rivals Rewards is top tier fodder is thuming. Uh, remember when 89s were like 29k? Yeah, they're 33 a piece, 34. 90s are 55,000 coins a piece. And De Bruyne has gone up 15k, I believe. He was like 65,000 coins. He's almost 80k from where he was on the weekend. He's flying because, again, like we mentioned yesterday, the top tier is the most unpackable. And it looks like people are doing the Eusebio. It looks like people are doing the Hullet and the Mbappe right now in this game. And that's where they have to go and buy cards because, again, these are the tougher cards to pack. So... They got to go and buy them, and that's why this part of the market's doing good. This part of the market could rise a bit more today, in my opinion, as well. If you have any of these, I wouldn't say go invest, but if you have them, list them up. 87s are starting to rise a little bit. 88s going up about 18K. That's good to see. No, no lightning rounds yesterday. That is good as well for that fodder um, on the middle of the high tier, which we're hoping can still go up because it is overall still very low, in my opinion. Now, lastly, the last time, this is the last time, guys, that we have to look at this graphic all right today's the last day of winter wild cards sbcs which i can't believe i'm saying this but i'm almost glad that it's over because i hope something new comes because it's probably gonna be better than what we've had but we're getting treza gay today and my expectations are at an all-time low um because we had a decent sbc yesterday we do have the 88 centurions version of treza gay so he's getting another card so hopefully it's 90 rated maybe it's 89 I don't know what they're going to do with this one today, man. He, this one's got acrobatic playstyle plus. His other playstyles aren't that great. Power header, first touch, aerial. They're not bad, but like no finesse, no Trivella, any of the meta ones. He's four star, four star base. He's medium low work rates. We got to work on that. So expectations are really low, but it is a French striker icon SBC that will be coming today. So we'll see if there's any surprises for us there as well. Um, and then other than that today, marquee matchups, right? Not expecting a whole lot else. Besides the content, maybe a little bit in the store, but I mean, I thought we were going to get lightning rounds yesterday. We almost always do on Wednesdays and we got nothing. I mean, this is the only lightning round pack that is still there. So maybe they want to run one last set of lightning rounds. I think the 30 coin pack comes back for the last time today as well. So this is the, the send off of winter wild cards, man. What a promo of winter wild cards started off, started off amazing. Honestly, started off great. The SBCs were good. Yeah, they were expensive, but they were good. 83 times 10 last week was good. Um, team of the week upgrade was nice to have there. The evolutions at the beginning went crazy, like the growth spurred and all the stuff last week. The evolutions this week definitely slowed down, which helped the market out, which we kind of expected, but we didn't expect the player SBCs to be as bad as they were. I gotta say, it might be it wasn't a terrible winter wild card, it still was a good promo, but it's probably comparatively to the other winter wild cards that we have had in the past, it might be. The worst winter wild cards of all time but man it's tough to say that when you had all those crazy evos that are out and i'm looking at right now like thinking and remembering like okay i'm trying to pack either weston mckenney or pedro poro or uh Sessignon from my rewards tomorrow so that i can start an evolution right because i got evolutions that i gotta start with those guys so i'm trying to pack them to get the first owner i'll buy them off the market if i have to sort of thing but yeah that's kind of the end of winter wild cards one thing i do want to mention really quick is there is a bit more information on who our upcoming flashback SBC might be. It is an English player. It's not a goalie as well. It's got the regular basic chem style. And uh, I think I heard a couple of rumors, a couple of grumblings. I know it's been tweeted out by some leakers that sometimes are wrong, but are sometimes right. We believe that this is Raheem Sterling, a flashback for Raheem Sterling. Um, of course, he's got the gold card. I used his inform early on in the game. This card was very good dribbling wise. He doesn't even have technical plus, but his, his R1 dribbling 
uh, was crazy at the beginning of the game. 96 agility, 95 balance. No playstyle pluses on this item. Um, yeah, Sterling is the flashback, we think. Wait for an official leak maybe today. I don't think that this would be released, though, until Friday at the earliest, tomorrow at the earliest, but then maybe Saturday, Sunday, sometime during the weekend. That's when I would expect to see a flashback SBC released during that time. So that's something to watch out for there. That could hurt some wing players in the Premier League, potentially, if that SBC is pretty good, depending on what position that he plays. But I'm still holding strong to Doku's because I don't think that's until the weekend. And I'm hoping that Doku and some of these guys in some of the market today can take off a little bit more. But definitely watch out for some more higher tier cards like the Schneider. If you've got a lot of coins, there probably will be windows to buy some Panic today. But as you can see here, right, I'm picking up Parasitch on bid for like 21,000 coins, and he was 24 yesterday. I'm hoping that he goes back up to 24, 25. I'm looking at the under 200,000 coin cards because they are still doing good. But that's going to be the video for today, guys. Make sure, you get your, um, make sure you get your qualifications games in if you're doing that. Good luck with your rivals rewards today. I'm not saving them because I'm looking to pack those cards for Evos, and I don't save packs until we get up to literally the doorstep of Team of the Year anyway. It's just the way that I run it. But, uh, yeah, good luck with those Rivals rewards today if you are opening. And that's going to be the video for today. If you enjoyed it, drop a thumbs up on a comment below if you have any questions. And subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate with the Count. See you guys in the stream today. Peace.